I trust that God has been speaking to each one of us in personal ways. And my prayer is that we would not only be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of God's word. That the lessons we've learned will be lessons we will begin to live in our life. Most of you have been with us from the very first day of our study. We're looking at the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 is the key verse in the book of Colossians. Paul reminds the church at Colossae that Jesus is the head of the body the church. He, he is from the beginning. He is the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything, he and he alone will receive the supremacy. So the book of Colossians is all about the supremacy of Jesus Christ. He is the creator. He is the redeemer. He is high and exalted. He is king of kings and lord of lords. All supremacy is his and his alone. And the the Apostle Paul says, when we begin to understand the supremacy of Jesus Christ, everything in my life changes. Chapter 1 of the book of Colossians is the doctrine chapter. This is where Paul declares the supremacy of Jesus Christ. Chapter 2 is the danger chapter. This is where Paul in so many ways defends the supremacy of Jesus Christ. And then as you turn to chapter 3 and 4, this is the duty chapter. Paul says every single believer you become a display of the supremacy of Jesus Christ. That the world will see the supremacy of Jesus Christ through our lives. On the first day, we tried to answer the question, how does the church navigate through times of dealing with culture? Yesterday we looked at the church dealing with the socio-economic and political injustices. Today we want to think of the church and the home. I suspect that the Garo Convention chose this theme this morning. Because the church today is faced with challenges like never before. How do I deal with premarital relationships? How do we deal with divorce that is happening right within the church of Jesus Christ? How how do we deal with unfaithfulness in marriage? How do we deal with marriages in which there is no love for one another? How do we deal with rebellion of children when it comes to their relationship with parents? How do we deal with parents who have no responsibility for their children? And as the church asks these questions, many times the church is being led by worldly wisdom. 
Mondol yara atusak ni kita gisik nangi akana ni rang kosa cengar manro kata. But God invites us to come back to His Word. A Isu lara ancing ku Isu ni kata nara riba pelinga. And as we come back to His Word, aro ancing Isu ni kata nara riba pelor. God reminds us. Isu lara ancing ku gisik kata. That there is a problem, a problem of sin. A ancing ni menungsung kata nara ini kan nara papa nua. When when it comes to the family, there are problems of sin. A noktan mu bayar pap ni ini kan yang nang. And we need to submit to the one who is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Yesterday I talked about how our believing needs to change our behaving. Today I want to talk to you about how my union with Jesus Christ changes my communion with my family. Ini men Kristus maksa nangrum ani ramai kan cing rokta maksa nangrum ani ko dengkang atas cing mukawang ada lu agan siapa? I want to tell you this this morning. Aha ya pun esok mana agan siapa? There is only a true believer in Jesus Christ. Di sini Kristus oh baby raga pa mangsan who is able to live the kind of family relationship that the Bible talks about. Aku mangsan sastu agan tu payah dikeh no nangrum ni pak rumi dengi tani ko thandar thandar game. Because it is in the understanding of my union with Jesus Christ. Aha di sini Kristus that I begin to have the most incredible communion in my family. Think about it this way. Many of our families, we have broken communion. And the root of that problem is because there is a broken union in our relationship with Jesus Christ. When a man or woman is deeply committed to that union with Jesus. I become deeply committed to the communion with my family. Isn't it important that the Apostle Paul begins Colossians chapter 3 with these words? He reminds us that we died with Jesus Christ. He reminds us that we've been made a life with Jesus Christ. He reminds us how we've been raised with Jesus Christ. He reminds us how we've been hidden in Jesus Christ. He reminds us how we will be glorified in Jesus Christ. It is as I understand that union that the communion in my family changes. Our text for meditation today. Colossians chapter three. I'm going to read to you verses eighteen to twenty-one. I want you to follow with me in your Bible. Colossians chapter three. Verses eighteen to twenty-one. The apostle Paul says, "Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands." as is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. You see, the Apostle Paul, as he writes to the families in the church at Colossae he writes to them in the context of their union with Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but every time I think about the illustration that God used to talk about marriage, it makes me shudder. When God talks about a union between a man and a woman, God likens that union to the union that he has with his church. Husband, love your wife as Christ loves the church. As the God of the universe has a relationship with his bride, the church in the same same way, husband, love your wife. Wives, 
submit to your husbands as the church will submit to Jesus Christ. Now I don't know about you that makes me shudder the God of the universe when he talks about your marriage when he talks about your home the illustration he uses is of his love for his church that's how serious it is when we begin to take the relationships in our family casually we can never understand Christ's relationship with the church you know there are so many people who take their relationships with their family deeply casually and here is the apostle Paul writing to the church at Colossae and he's saying to husbands husbands I want you to be the display of the supremacy of Jesus Christ Wife, I want you to be the display of the supremacy of Jesus Christ Parents, I want you to be the display of the supremacy of Jesus Christ. And children, I want you to be a display of the supremacy of Jesus Christ. We want to look at God's instruction to each one of those four groups very quickly this morning. I want to begin to talk to the husbands this morning. Let's turn in our Bible to a couple more passages of scripture before we look at what God wants to say to the husbands this morning. Very familiar passages of scripture. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Let me begin to read to you at verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but they feed it and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. I want you to keep this in mind this morning. When the Apostle Paul writes these words, and when the church at Colossae reads these words, and when the church at Ephesus reads these words, their hands are shaking because they are hearing truths that mankind has never heard before. 
The Apostle Paul is now talking about how our relationship in marriage is radically changed because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. You see, before I came to Jesus Christ, I did not enjoy that union with the God of the universe. But now I've died in Jesus. I've been made alive in Jesus. I've been raised with Jesus. I've been hidden in Jesus. I've been glorified in Jesus. Therefore, I'm going to be a totally different husband. I can't be like the husbands of the world. I now become a husband who lives my life according to the word of God. My union with Jesus Christ changes my communion with my wife. As I look at the Ephesian text and the Colossian text, I want to suggest that Paul says three things to every husband. Number one, he says, Husbands, your love for your wife needs to be a serving love. Husband, your love for your wife needs to be a serving love. Now, please keep in mind that that was one of the most revolutionary messages that men heard in the days when Paul wrote the book of Colossians and the book of Ephesians. Because the man was meant to be served. The man was the boss of the family. The man had absolute authority. But as Paul writes to these husbands, he says, husband, I want to challenge you that in your relationship with your wife, you will display the supremacy of Jesus Christ by the way in which you are able to serve her. By the way in which you are able to care for her. By the way in which you are able to in so many ways assist her. My and I will never forget meeting a man by the name of Dr. Dreisbach. When he came to our house, he had just lost his wife. He had been married to his wife for almost about 60 years. And every time we spoke with Dr. Dreisbach, he would always talk about his wife. And his whole face would be so bright as he talked about his wife. And he knew that this man was absolutely madly in love with his wife. When he went back from our home, he sent me a Facebook friend request and we became friends. And then one day I saw the Facebook post of his daughter. And this is what the daughter wrote. Her daughter. Her, her daughter wrote this about Dr. Dreisbach. She said, from the time I was born, when I look at my father, the thing that I appreciate the most is the way in which he loved and cared for my mother. She said, for all of the years I saw my father, Every single day, Salantian, when my mother went to the car to drive with my father, my father always opened the door for his wife and made her to sit down before he drove. Every single day in my life, 
When my mother came to the dining table, <laughs> my father treated her like she was in a five-star hotel. A five-star hotel. He would move the chair out and have my mother to sit down. And she said, "This was not an act." This was something that I saw for almost 55 years of my life. Every single day, my father served my mother. He was deeply in love with her. You see, Dr. Dreisbach, yeah, Dr. Dreisbach became a display of the supremacy of Jesus Christ when it came to his relationship with his wife. His children were able to see a love relationship that comes out of a union with Jesus Christ. So Paul says, husbands in your relationship with your wives, may they be a serving love. Secondly, he says, husbands in your relationship with your wives, may they be a sacrificing love. Paul writes to the husband and says to the husband, Love your wife in the same manner as Christ loved the church. And was willing to lay his life down for the church. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. A relationship that was absolutely dear, a relationship with a father and a mother, now changes as the man gets into a relationship with his wife. You see what Paul is saying to the husband is that in your relationship with your wife, may you be a person who is willing to make those sacrifices. You know the Garo church is asking the question, how can we reduce divorce? How can we deal with the brokenness of families? You know how you can deal with the brokenness of your families? You start living by the word of God. When husbands begin to do what God wants you to do, there will be no more problem with divorce. When husbands begin to live the kind of life God wants you to live, your neighbors will say, I want a marriage like that one. When we begin to live according to the word of God, we begin to display the supremacy of Jesus Christ in the world that we live in. This morning I'm speaking to husbands. Think about your own relationship with your wife this morning. And ask yourself, have you loved your wife as Christ loved the church? Have you served your wife as Christ served the church? Have you sacrificed for your wife? as Christ sacrificed for his church. There's a story from history. It's a story that's told by a historian whose name is Xenophon. He writes about how Emperor Cyrus captured a prince from Armenia. And when he captured the prince from Armenia along with his whole family, Cyrus brought the prince of Armenia to his court. And in front of the whole court, 
He looked at the prince of Armenia. Armenia And he said to the prince of Armenia, If I give you back your kingdom, if I restore you back to your position, how happy will that make you? The prince of Armenia would not even look up. He looked upon the ground and he said, Great Cyrus, that would make me a little happy. But what will make me most happy, Cyrus, is if you would restore my wife. Back to the position in which she was. If you send her back to her family. If I can only be sure that my wife is safe, great Cyrus. I will give you my entire life. Now Cyrus had never ever heard of any man talk with such love for his wife. And so Cyrus looked at the prince of Armenia. And he said, Take your beautiful wife and go back, I restore you to your kingdom. As the prince of Armenia bowed before Cyrus and walked out from his court, he looked at his beautiful wife. And he said, wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't Cyrus gracious? And then he asked his wife, he said, did you look at Cyrus? What a handsome man he is. What an imposing personality he is. And the prince of Armenia's wife said these words. She said, I had no time to look at Cyrus. My whole heart, my eyes, my whole being was fixed on you, Prince of Armenia. To think that there was a man who would lay his life down for me. I didn't even care to look at Cyrus. I looked at you. I asked you husbands. Have your wives ever experienced that moment in your relationship with them? We're talking about something really serious here. We're talking about how husbands need to be like Jesus in their relationships. This is serving love. This is sacrificing love. And thirdly, very importantly, this is sanctifying love. One of the things that Paul writes to the husband about in the book of Ephesians is that husbands need to be diligently involved in the sanctification process and the growing of their wife in their spiritual walk. Now, husband in your relationship with your wife, says this is a sanctifying love. I am investing in my wife. We are growing together. We are loving the word together. We are praying together. We are doing God's work together. Oh, how I love to be able to work with my life in our spiritual growth in a way that honors God. You know, we had a marriage seminar many years ago. And we had many husbands and wives that came. And, and I, I was one of the people who spoke in that marriage meeting. And at the end of that meeting, a lady came and talked to me. She said, I've been married to my husband for 35 years. 
but this will surprise you. Not one time have we prayed together. We have family prayers, but as a husband and wife, we've not prayed together one time. 35 years. And the sad thing was that our husband was a deacon of a leading Baptist church. For 35 years, they never prayed together. You know, there are husbands like that sitting here even today. You don't spend time in prayer with your wives. You don't study God's word with your wives. You don't work towards mutual sanctification in your relationship. You see what Paul is saying. My union with you, Jesus, changes my communion with my wife. You know, uh, one of the things that made me very happy recently, uh, in fact, Mai doesn't come with me often to many of the meetings I speak at. But she was with me in Kerala a few weeks ago as I was speaking at some meetings. And I'd spoken about husbands and their relationships with their wives. And when we came back to our room, my looked at me. And she said, Everything you said, you've done in your relationship with me. And you know, it gave me so much of happiness. There are so many pastors. You can stand on the pulpit and talk about marriage. But your wife sits in the pew saying, what a lie. There are so many pastors who can stand in the pulpit and talk about how to have godly homes. But your family sits in the pew saying, what a lie. How does the Garo Church deal with family? You come back to the cross. You come back to your union with Jesus Christ. Because it is in that union with Jesus Christ that you begin to have communion with one another. Then Paul speaks to the wives. What does Paul have to say to the wives? Look with me at Colossians chapter 3. Verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. I'd like you also to turn with me in your Bible to the book of 1 Peter for a moment. From chapter 3. I'm going to read from verses 1 down to verse 6. Peter says, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that in if any one of them do not believe the word, they will be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. When they see the purity and reverence of your lives, your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way in which the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands. Like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord, you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. 
Sarani Abraham ku getel mengi uko mania kata na simang nama ko taki aro mamung kenak tani na kengiza uni dirang uaha. You see, as you look at Paul and Peter, ana ancin Paul aro Peter ko ni agar kuni odai. The Bible says three things to why. Tadi cukup parani yang mengetam kuaga niya. Number one, skang pau. Bible talks about submission. Entah di satu dua orang, anda ko bama tadi mana gana? You know, today the word submission, wife submit to your husband has become a problem for many. Tadi cukup parani cukup bab abambo no di, jangan bama nak ni ingat ni ko abai ngah. But as Paul and Peter are writing, wife submit to your husband. Jika Paul atau Peter cukup parani cerita tentang abambo ni siapa tengok? They are using language that comes out from, in many ways, the military. In the military, you have different people in different positions. All of them are part of the military. All of them are part of the nation's security force. But different people are given different positions. And so what God is saying to the wife is this. He says, I have given the husband a God-ordained position of leadership. Tadi segera perang nara, nukta us dekai dalci nukta orang ha. And you learn to submit to that leadership. Tadi ya dalgu panan nara pamnan tak sekira boleh. As the church submits to Christ. Jadi ke mondoli Kristu nara bama ta. Let me tell you this. Tahu yang mana sih nama nara? Husband loves his wife with a serving love, sacrificing love, and a sanctifying love. Ah, jen solo segera perang, dam dekai kasani chi. One the key wrong ta or kang pa ar one the key wrong ta tu makasa ni cikak sa. His wife has no problem to submit to that husband. Tahu ni anak ke segebaran kasar ni segebaran segebaran na bapna mampu ni ingkar ni dongja. And so as Paul writes to the wives, he says, wives, how can you become the display of Jesus Christ? Tapi Paul agaknya cuma ni kan esmar Kristus ni, cuma Kristus ni, cuma sang pokok orang ni pun kami sok gen. Because of your union with Jesus, nasib ni Kristus maksa makarmani ke mana? You now are able to submit to your husband in this beautiful community. That brings him honor and praise. And this morning I want to speak to wives. In your relationship with your husband. Have you been the kind of wife God wants you to be? Has your union with Jesus Christ changed your communion with your husband? You know, I, I prayed this prayer this morning. I said, Lord, even if the people forget my whole message, may they not just forget this one lesson more. When the husbands go back and meet their wives, may they meet their wives saying, my union with Jesus needs to affect my communion with my wife. And may each of you wives, and may each of you wives, when you meet your husbands, may you meet them saying, my union with Jesus needs to change my communion with my husband. See, so as Paul and Peter write to the women, they say, submit to your husbands. Secondly, they talk about separation. Wives live a separated life. Paul talks about holiness in our relationships with one another. Paul talks about that inner unfading holiness and beauty. Jadi kita cuba ni, rong thala ni, aru orang ini tuari mempola lagi. He says, wives, may your lives be that inner unfading beauty, that holiness that brings God the honor and praise. Isol nanti nak berasa sungguh apa kita cuba ni, jadi tuari orang hati china. In our relationship as husband and wife. Ante ni cukup apa segala apa segala kerma niu. In our thought life. Ante ni cuci bila la niu. In the way we think. Ante ni cuci ni ramo. In our desires. Ante ni suka ni ramo. In our mood. May the holiness of Jesus become right there at the core of our lives. You see, that becomes easy when my union with Jesus is good. See, when my union with Jesus is good, then I'm not thinking of 
dirty bones. And my union with Jesus is good. Then I am not compromising in my relationship with my spouse. So Paul writes to the wives. He says, number one, submit to your husbands. Number two, may you be a woman of separation. And number three, he talks about steadfastness. You know, when I was reading 1 Peter chapter 3, one of the things that caught my attention is verse 6. In verse 6, right at the end of verse 6, Peter says these words. He talks about how Sarah obeyed Abraham. And then he says, you are her daughters. If you do what is right, and then nobody says, and do not give way to fear. What is Peter talking about? Peter is saying you be steadfast. You know, he's talking about wives, by the way they live their lives, their husbands will come to Jesus Christ. And he says sometimes it's going to be difficult. But you be steadfast. Don't give in to fear. Walk in faith. You see, and as Peter and Paul write to the wives, they say to the wives, Have you become a display of Jesus Christ as a wife? I read a re uh, an interesting story recently. I thought it was funny. In fact, I don't use funny stories when I speak usually these days. Uh, but I thought that this was quite a humorous story, but a very powerful one at that. There was a man by the name of Dr. George Crane. George Crane a very, very well-known preacher, teacher of the Word of God. And a man who helps many people in marriage problems. Since one day a wife came to Dr. George Crane. George Crane And she said, I want to divorce my husband. And not only do I want to divorce him. Before I divorce him. I want to really hurt him. I want him to feel the pain. I want him to suffer. Do you have any idea for me? So Dr. George Crane said to her, Ma'am, I have the right idea for you. This is what you should do. For the next three months, you go back and you act like you love your husband. You just love him. Even when he is doing all these terrible things, you just love him. You be an amazing wife. You listen to every word he speaks. And then at the end of three months, suddenly you divorce him. Then his heart will be very broken. The lady said, that's a good idea. So she went off. Three months later, she didn't come to see Dr. George anymore. So Dr. George phoned her. And he said, Madam, Madam, it's three months over. It's time for the divorce. It's time to break the heart. She said, what do you mean divorce? I love this man. And he loves me. No question of divorce. You see, in three months, when she became who God wanted her to become, their marriage changed. You see, many times we are selfish in our marriages. And Jesus invites us to be husbands and wives that become the display of Jesus Christ. You know, this morning, if I were to ask you, take a pen and a paper and write down 
আর শিব হাউ মেনি হাজবেন্ডস এন্ড ওয়াইফস ইন দ্য গারো চার্চ দ্যাট ইউ থিঙ্ক আর এন অ্যামেজিং এক্সাম্পল থাকবে Look with me in your Bible Colossians chapter 3. Colossians I get to me now. I'm reading verses 20 and 21. Uh Paul Greek Greek stuff on your case. Children obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. They go para na simani ma pa ran ko ma nibo. Fathers do not embitter your children or they will become discouraged. Ah phago para na simani de phate ran ko khau na tabe wa mang gi sit bi jana ga ta. Turn with me in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. ফাদার্সিং <laughs> Fathers do not exasperate your children instead bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. As you look at Paul writing to fathers and mothers. He says three things. Number 1. Encourage your children. Number 2. equip your children and number 3 become examples for your children encourage your children equip your children and become examples to your children why do you do that because of your union with jesus christ i have died in Christ. Ah uh, Christ was sia. I be made alive in Christ. Christ was a tangible ha. Therefore, when you get I'm a different father. Ah the tangible father won't get. Therefore, when you get I'm a different mother. Ah the tangible mother won't get. I encourage. Ah didia. I equip. Ah the sika and I become an example. Ah the tangible sika won't get. I share with you a beautiful story. Ah mo sana beni to boko boko kana. The story about a young girl. Then me chip dan be me chip ni go boko. Ah mother die. And her father looked after her. Aruni pangko ko ni roka ha. Father was an amazing man. Pangko para blon na kapa ga shiwa man de wan. He was a man of the most amazing amazing integrity and truth. Ah ya man de na men kick pa ro be big pa man de wan chem. And he loved his daughter. Aru wa de mitch na na men ka sa. And the daughter loved him. Aru de mitch pa pa ga na ka sa. And then one day, and the sal sao, the girl was heartbroken. Ah de mitch ni ka tum bi ha. Because her father suddenly died. He was still young. Ah, what am I going to tell? But he was dead. He was sick. She was just completing her university. Wa university of Pora ni ko ya David but also not something else. And then he was dead. Ah, Pak was sick. And she said to herself, how how am I going to manage in life? Wa gani ga chama me ki tangi tangi no ka pa sabo. When the father died, ni Pak was sick house, she tried to see if her father had any money. Ah, Pak pa thang ka dunga ma ni ni da to tanga. Her father had hardly any money. ফাগপা দোনং পথা ফাগবনি থা দোনং পথা কবল জান দি ইয়াং গার্ল শি ক্রাই আর ইয়া মি ইজ এ গ্রাপা হা শি সেড ডেডি ইউ লেফট মি এ
Nadi aku wakali dari Allah. You didn't leave anything for me, Daddy. Aku nanti mampu kebetulan nanti ha. How am I going to manage in life? Aku mesti kita kita kita. Now she just finished university. Wah university ko pernah macam mana? Her friends and she were applying for jobs. Aku amam unir ping maksa wak hamna kalinya. So she began to apply for jobs as well. Aku nanti kita wak hamna kalah. And then one day she heard some of her friends talking with one another. Aku ping kang nanti golpo aku asal sah kena ha. They were going to apply to the biggest company in the world. And the girl thought to herself, I studied in an ordinary university. I'm not the most intelligent girl. I will never stand a chance in this big company. But she said to herself, Let me just apply. They'll throw my application out. She applied. And to everybody's surprise, all her friends were shocked. She was called for the interview. She walked into the interview. The manager was kind to her. And after a few minutes, he said to her, you're appointed. She was shocked. She looked at the manager. Manager, she goes, "Mitchell, sir." She said, "Sir, Wagana, sir." I don't understand. Are you watching this? My friends studied in bigger universities. Anir Peng ran the shit big university. My friends are more intelligent than me. Anna, what did Anir Peng say? Bata. None of them were called for the interview. Ah, na, wa mo kinjui no kamja. You've been so kind to me. Even Anna kasay na kina. You've given me an appointment. Are you not Anna kamura? Are you not kamura kijo? How did it happen? Yer may di kyo. And the manager smiled at the girl. And he said to the girl, The moment I saw your your bio data, I saw your father's name. And the moment I saw your father's name, I said, I've got to take you in my company. I want to tell you something, young lady. You can apply for any company in this city. Yeah, yeah. Apply for any company in this city. Every company will take you. You know why? Because of your father. Everybody knew your father. They knew he was an honest man. They knew he was a hardworking man. Every single company wanted your father. The moment I saw his name, I said, I don't want to lose the opportunity. How many of us fathers have left such a legacy for our children? Some of our, the way we've lived our lives. So people will see our name. And never give a job to his son. Never give a job to his daughter. The most corrupt. The most terrible worker. The most terrible attitude. You see, when we become displays of Jesus Christ, we leave a legacy behind. And then what does Paul have to say to the children? Very quickly as we finish this morning, I know we've got to come back for our next service pretty quickly. Look with me at Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to read for you again what Paul says to children in verse 20. Children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases. Says so you look at the Colossian and the Ephesian text. Paul says three things to the children. Number one, he says, children, heed your parents. Obey your parents. Secondly, he says, honor your parents. And thirdly, he says, this is something that makes God happy. This is something that pleases God. This is something that God promises to bless in an amazing way. You know, as a person who have experienced Jesus Christ in my life, 
ana Jesus Christ ko drong po nge my union with Jesus ang ni Jesus ko sa bakramani changes my communion with my parents ang ni maap ang baksan ni bakramani ko ng tangata one of the greatest joys uh, for 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 my and me my ami ko ba my arong na bit Christian ani ra is to have my parents living with me ang ni maap ang baksan ni kanya no my father just turned 90 in the month of January A January ja o ang ni baba bisis ot chok ma my mother is 86 ang ni ma baba bisis ot chet tok ma all the joy of being able to care for my parents a ang ni ma apa na tang tikko na ma na ni ra yao mai ro flop go pa pisho ani and during the covid time covid ni somoyo my father had a surgery a my ni pa go pa ba operation ka na na so for one year Bersisana. We had both our parents in our. Ah, uh, the angni magapa pagapa ba, robini pagapa ba. One was one of the most joyful times of our lives. Yang tinggi tinggi tanya no, bat sang masalong ha. To have both dad and mom. Ah, magapa pagapa dulu gini cini. And daddy and mummy. Ah, magapa pagapa. Living in the same home. Absan no kurungan yang. Loving one another. Saksa dulu sana kasar kerana. Caring for one another. Saksa saksa pernah semasa kani cini. All the joy of having those relationships. Yang nak apa pakar mana itu mana ayam mantuk pakat sani. Because of Jesus Christ. Yang Yesus Kristus ni kemana? So as we come to the end of our Bible studies. Emana cing Bible study ni boleh kamera mana ribang on? How does the church deal with culture and the challenges of culture? Berimun anci ni tak bewal rangon, nek nek kan yang suka on mundur yang ramai kayu rancak. How does the church deal with socio economic and political injustice? Awan nek yang sungsal, aru awan nek yang sasun ni bidungo. How does the church deal with problems in the home? No, tamo ni nit kaniyang ko mundo nila may kaya wala sa kanya. All sides. All of them. Hey, listen. Kana tumbo. You are a display of the supremacy of Jesus Christ. Sa simula Kristo ni chipat sa mga ni ko tang mesong brawa. Because of your union with Him. Your life changes. And this morning, the question that we want to ask ourselves is: Has our life changed? Every eye closed, every head bowed. Let's pray together.